The Elements of Harmony and Saviors of Worlds by R.K. Stryker, J.K. 5, Chapter 12. Tiffany circled the sky around, looking around. She finally landed near the, near the resident princess ponies in the bush willies accompanying them. Ponytails just ahead! She announced, rearing up on her hind legs and pointing down the road. We'll be there in no time! Starburst sighed in relief. Oh, thank goodness for that. She raised the foreleg and looked down at the bottom of the hoof. My toes and pads are positively aching! She wants to place it back on the dirt road. Why could they get these roads paid yet? Like Catalot, Manhattan, or Napon? Tiffany chuckled at her old friend. <laughs> Maybe we should get out of the castle a few more times a year. Although, Huffington was a rather nice town. The inn had a most entertaining act in that blue unicorn and her Pegasus partner. A shame it was so late and we missed the first act of their performance. Sparkle shrugged. A bit too improvised for my taste, but otherwise enjoyable. She looked down the road and squinted, horn glowing. I set a large congregation of ponies down the road, along with structures. The horn stopped glowing as she smiled. Yes, Ponyfield is right ahead. Primrose snored. <laughs> we can see the buildings at the ends of the horizon, Sparkle. No need for any fancy magic to sense that. She kicked the road, digging into the road and setting up a cloud of dust. Now, let's go! The princess ponies continued their journey down the road, coming up on a heavily laying cart being pulled by a huge red stallion with a green apple sliced in half for a cutie mark, and a stalk of hay between his lips. A much larger stallion with a tan coat and three horseshoes walked by his side, while a mare with a light orange coat and three apples for a cutie mark with a hat tipped over her eyes tented to the cart. Tiffany landed beside him. Excuse me, she said, getting to her attention. I was just wondering how far ahead Ponyville is by hoof. The mare to her. Well, sucks, Ponyville. It's only a few minutes away by hoof. She went sparkle over. I'll take it here now from around here. See how that'll huff. Nice example, Jack, by the way. Pleasure to meet you all. She waved the four legged the two stallions. Big one there's my brother, Big Mike Chos. And the smaller one's our cousin, Caramel. She tied her hoof up to the side and backed away to Princess Pony's King. We run sweet apple lakers. Play samples here in Equestria. Royal Blue tried off a huffle, Jack. Why, for sweet apple acres? She suddenly set the fa uh, ground. Why, of course! One of the bells of the Elements of Harmony! Honesty, if I'm not mistaken! She suddenly dropped down custody. It is an honor! She says the other ponies followed suit. Bing Magatas looked back over his shoulder. Nice to meet you too, ladies. What brings you up the pony for you? Roy Bill focused on the stallion, her eight cheeks coloring slightly. Um, we've come to meet an old friend of ours named Megan. She waved a foreleg at her friends as he approached. We! Are the princess ponies from, from the Crystal Desert? She paused aside. Hmm. I'm guessing you've never heard of us. Big Magatos turned around, towing the cart with him. I don't think I ran of you back in school. Dream Valley, Paradise Estate, right? A big old castle with... He trailed off as a pair of bustlies hopped over to him. And the cutest little ball of fuzz I ever did say! He held out his four legs and grabbed the bustlie, hugging it close. So adorable! Caramel rolled his eyes. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. You'll not catch me hugging one of those balls of hair. He knelt down and eyed a bush woolly and a steel helmet wore. Man, that hat. Will you, a nice something? The bush woolly jumped around, waving his tiny arms at Caramel. Bush woolly, not afraid of pony. Bush woolly, honor guard for princess ponies. Sparkle cleared his throat and the bush woolly bowed swack. <coughs> As we said, we are on our way to meet an old friend of ours named Megan. She sighed a smile. It's been a long time, and we never thought we'd see her again. Applejack's eyes bugged out. Megan! She held the foreleg up into the air as far as it could. Oh, about these tall? Where's a hat like the one I got on right now? Says our bike legs the highest paws. Right, Megan? The princess voice all eagerly nodded. You've met her? Sparkle exclaimed. How is she? Is she well? There's a party for her today. Big Magatos looked at Applejack. Chewing him on uh, his stock of hay. Are you thinking the party you was a fan to, AJ? Applejack nodded, tipping her hat forward. Well, yeah, that's right. It's that Twilight's place. She suddenly grinned. If you let me go with you, I can take you along right to her doorstep. Sparkle grinned, bowing to her. We would be most honored for your assistance, Applejack. She reared up, kicking the air. Miss Willis, an honor guide for Applejack. She sat in, landing on her hooves and sending up sparks. Applejack looked back to her brother. 
You'll be all right with that saying today, Michael Jones. She kicked slightly at the wheels. Those rat wheels look a little shaky to me. I can show the princess ponies to the library and throw a double tack back on you later. Being Macintosh said, waved her off. No, don't worry about it. E.J., Caramel and I can handle the living breaks. As long as you get the tire on square, we'll be all right. He pointed down the road. Now you all go and have fun at the bar, you hear? Make sure to tell us all about it when you get back. Caramel nine. Yeah, yeah, Apple Jake. You go on and have fun at the bar like you're planning on and tell us about it. I'll tell ya. Applesack nodded, and the princess ponies formed up behind her, with the bus boys standing around. The group moved off, quickly leaving Big Macintosh, Caramel, and the cart behind as they tried down the road. Applesack looked around at all the princess ponies as they approached the first few buildings of Ponyville proper, passing through the residential district. So, what's you got on your hair, Slayer? She asked, waving a hoof around her head. Those some sort of fancy power hands or something? Starburst took the head. Now, uh, this is Hats of Office. They indicate our positions of authority as princess ponies. She looked around at the Thatcher's houses, the ponies milling about. What a wonderful town, Applejack. She waved at a few of the ponies. Hello, all. It is a pleasure to meet you here in your lovely village, she shouted. Some of the ponies waved back, others backing up a bit. Applejack looked her up, around and then reared on her hind legs. Hey, y'all! Let's give the princess ponies a nice profile welcome! We're here for a special friend, not only theirs, but Princess Celestia, too! So come on, y'all, and say howdy! A few of the ponies approached. Welcome to Ponyville! He said, My name's Blues Noseworthy. He pointed towards the town square. Market's gonna be up in a bit. I'll be putting my six foot, and there'll be food to buy as well. He looked back to the princesses and lowered himself to one knee. Hey, have a good time. Sparkle returned to bow. Thank you, Mr. Nutworthy. Perhaps later we will sample the fine wares and listen to your music. But for now, we have a prior appointment. She so looked around the crowd gathered around them. But for now, the library! Applesack led them over through the street as the crowd dispersed. One of the ponies returning to their homes, but others making their way towards the Mary Square and the park set up there. They continued their walk, arriving at the Ponyville Library. Guess came for Primrose as she spotted Megan sitting at a table with an earth pony. There she is! She shouted, raising a foreleg, waving frantically. Megan! Megan! Megan cupped a cupcake and bit gingerly into it, taking a good chunk of the frosting and apple expertly placed on top. She swallowed it down side. Oh, Mr. Clike, I don't think I might hire you for our 20th wedding anniversary. She said, eating the rest of it. She wiped her lips. So Leslie hired you, I you. Mr. Cake nodded, blessing slightly. And I would say you got there, Megan. Uh, thank you very much. She, he looked over his shoulder at Mrs. Cake and Pinky as he chatted with Danny Mike. Uh, terrific told, with the commission we're getting, we can finally take that free case at the arena the missus has been waiting. He stopped at the ground a few times, but stopped his eyes wide. Of course, that means leaving Pinky Pie in charge. Megan chuckled, but a voice from afar calling her name attracted her attention. She looked around, spotting a group of ponies spotting conical hats, with Applejack near the center and moving some piled bottles of fur bouncing along. She suddenly gasped as one of them waved to her. <gasps> the Princess Ponies! She shouted back, Hello! She raced around the table, running up to them even as they galloped forward. She suddenly skidded to a stop right before them and curtsied. Sparkle rolled her eyes. Oh, Megan, there is a time and a place for the calm. This isn't it! She hopped up, wrapped her forelegs around Megan's shoulders, pulling in for a human-style hug. She brushed her muzzle against Megan's cheeks in a kiss. Oh, 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 we've missed you! Megan returned a hug. Oh, I must see you too! <laughs> she let go, and Sparkle harped off. And back down to the ground. She wiped her eyes and breathed in as the other five tried it up. I just, I just can't believe it! She threw her arms around to the side as if to accompany them all. You all actually came! Primrose brought her head. How can we not, Megan? She looked to her right as Molly, Danny, and Mike approached. Her eyes narrowed slightly. Molly? And um, Danny? She looked at Mike. I do not believe we've had the pleasure, sir. Mike Curtis drove about. <clears throat> Mike Richards, your majesty. Megan's husband. He suddenly stepped his finger. My little horsey in the quest of the princess ponies? That's where I know you're from! Primo's eyebrow arts. I'm sorry, what's that? She looked at Megan and tilted her head slightly. Megan's cheeks blushed as he kicked the dirt. It's 
a book series I wrote back home, detailing my life here. She scratched the back of her head and barked out a laugh. <laughs> um, but it's still right, actually. She walked over to Mike and held her hand. Mac, these are Princesses Prince Primrose, Sparkle, Serena, Royal Blue, Tiffany, Tiffany, and Starburst. They guard the heart of Ponyland and are the mothers, I suppose, of Princess Alicia and Luna. A bush lily suddenly bounced up to her as she caught giggling. <laughs> oh, you like this adorable thing? It's a bush lily! The bush lily hugged Megan back. Megan's back! Megan's back! Great news! Megan's back! Yeah, yeah! He let go and hopped back down as Twilight approached. And Twilight Sparkle here too! Great day! Great day! Twilight nodded. A great day indeed, Bush Lily. She walked up to Sparkle and took one knee. You all look great! It's been too long, but I was bidding to see one of my studies life in Ponyville, she groaned. Not much of an excuse. Primrose raved her off. Oh! Not like we could, couldn't take some time to see Celestia's favorite apprentice! Molly took a step forward. Wait! You know them, Twilight? Sparkle cleared her throat. <clears throat> We've met Twilight a few times when she was still Celestia's personal apprentice. She brought Twilight when she was still a filly to our castle. She bit her lip and dipped her head. <laughs> she was so scared back then. Celestia looked down at the small filly in her hooves. Twilight, are you all right? She asked, leaning down. Twilight swallowed as the huge glass loomed in the distance. I'm fine, she said. Yeah, fine. I'm a bit nervous. Why does the princess probably think I'm a failure or stupid? Celestia's mouth open. Now, why would they think that, Twilight? You're studious, hardworking, and take excellent care of Spike, despite being, not being much more mature than him. She nuzzled Twilight's cheek, causing her to giggle. I've known the princess ponies my entire life. They and their bustwilly guards. Trust me, they'll love you. She stood up and looked at the castle. One in particular. Twilight learned about her head. I learned a lot about you six about magic, and I'll always be grateful for those lessons. She went to Applejack, still in the pack of princess ponies. Applejack, great to see you! She suddenly frowned. Wait, why are you with the princess ponies? Applejack shrugged and chuckled. <laughs> I'll chuck Twilight. I was just showing up to your house. Glory could think we were going to the same path. She nodded to the princesses and broke from their pack, trying over to Molly, Danny, and Mike. Pleasure to meet you, she said, crossing her four legs. My name's Applejack of Sweet Apple Acres, provider of the finest apples of Equestria. Molly and Danny suddenly moved around, focusing on her flanks. Only three apples, Molly said, kneeling down. She leaned over to look at Applejack's face. But other than that, <coughs> I, I, if I could ask, who was your mother, probably like you? Except some more apples on your flank? Applejack blanked. Well, the name's Applejack's been passed down from mother to daughter for years. She narrowed her eyes and stared at Molly. Why, precisely? Molly giggled. <laughs> I knew your ancestor. Great pony. But she couldn't put her hoof down without tripping over sudden. She suddenly held up her hands at Applejack's sudden glare. <laughs> Not that you're... Not that, are you? Tony so spoke up. Applejack's one of the most athletic ponies in Ponyville, Molly. I'm not sure what her ancestor was like, but in this case, I think the apple might have rolled a pit from the tree. Applejack looked to her friend and leaned forward, laying her hat slightly forward. Thank you, Twilight. Most appreciated there. She tried to pass Danny and Molly up to a table. She looked at her food there. So, we weigh in on Sarah Pony, or can any pony say again? Piggy Pie bounced over from... somewhere... And wrapped her four legs around Applejack's neck, squeezing until she turned blue. Of course you can dig in, she said. It's free for all, and now for free. She turned Applejack's head and looked around. My dice were her. Take all you want, but eat all you take. Applejack groaned, and her eyes rolled around their sockets. Blank eye! Fire! She gasped, and collapsed when she let go, body heaving. Megan, meanwhile, turned and walked back to the library. Messiah! Danielle! She called. I have some friends for you, the mate! Michelle sat in front of the decorative boosters, Spike in her lap. She looked up as Megan approached and gently pushed Spike off so she could stand. Those ponies? She asked, looking over. Oh, look you, Hyatt! Megan chuckled and looked over her shoulder as the princess ponies chatted with Twilight and her family. They're unique. She patted Michelle on the shoulder and walked around to the door, ducking inside. Danielle! Danielle! She looked up and saw her older daughter sitting on the floor, pile of books around her. 
She crossed her arms and shook her head. Oh, then you come on out. The sun is shining, and there's some old friends of mine I'd like you to meet. Danielle looked up from the hardcover and blinked. Huh? Oh! She put it to the side of Rose, groaning and went to... Ah! She hopped around a bit and massaged her legs. Oh, oh my things! Megan chuckled and backed up out of the library. Next time, don't see only your legs! She turned and led both legs over to Princess Ponies, who by now had moved to the food. I know the feeling, Danielle. I could tell you stories. Princess Ponies, these are my daughters, Michelle and Danielle. Michelle and Danielle, these are the princesses Primrose, Sparkle, Serena, Royal Blue, Tiffany, and Starburst! Michelle blurted out, pointing to each one. She looked to her mother. Just like your books, Mom! The Princess Ponies looked to each other before focusing on Megan. Is there any chance we can feed the books you've written? Tiffany asked, I sighing. They sound rather nice. Megan glanced at the door, then looked around, quickly spying Twilight chatting with Applejack and Pinkie Pie. Twilight! She half shouted, waving at the unicorn. You still got my books, you library? Twilight nodded, opened her mouth, but any response was cut off as a half dozen Pegasi, golden armor of the Royal Guard, descended, towing a large chariot behind them and getting everybody's attention. They landed, trotting and slowing to a halt in front of the library. Twilight, Megan, Danny, and Molly wandered over, the rest hanging back. I think this is a ride, Danny said, gripping his chair's arm rest tightly. The lead Pegasus sis detached himself from his harness and walked over. <laughs> Greetings, he announced. All right, it's Sergeant Cracker Roll, the Equestrian Royal Guard. Here for Megan, Danny, and Molly. He looked up at the three, eyes wide and slowly. So I assume you three are my characters? Megan straightened herself up and smoothed her dress slightly. We are, she said, bowing slightly. Thank you, Sergeant. We appreciate your fine service. Cracker nodded and walked around to the back of the chariot. He unfurled the wing and launched the back, letting it ramp down. We have chairs for you, but you need to add me, he said, motioning to the inside. Two chairs were bolted to the floor, and some chalk blocks for Danny's wheelchair was there as well. Whoa, Celestia thinks of everything. Six bags were piled near the front, and some headsets on hooks. Princess Celestia has also bequeathed you 100 bits apiece for personal spending and expenditures. He looked at Twilight. If you could, please. Twilight nodded, and her horn glowed. The bags all floated out. A hundred bits apiece, she said, shaking her head. Don't clean out the town, she said, looking to Mike and winking. Mike knelt down and opened a bag, pulling out a handful of gallon coins. He whistled slowly as he looked and dribbled back into the sack. <laughs> Princess Celestia don't do things halfway, does he? He waved to Michelle and Danielle. Come on, kids. We might be able to go into the town later and see the sights. If it's safe, that is. Dale looked up a bit, looked it over. The sun and the moon? She looked up. What? Celestia and Luna? Are those cue marks you all have? Twilight nodded from the chariot. Precisely, she said, grinning. The sun is Celestia's and the moon is Luna's. She tried back over to Mike. Mike, trust me on this. The Everfree Forest is dangerous, but Ponyville is safe is pretty safe. As as long as they stay inside the town, they should be safe as back home. Mike looked up and locked eyes with Megan, who nearly nodded. He looked to their daughters aside. <sighs> oh, they grow up too fast. He patted them on the shoulders and squeezed. You two promise to be safe? Michelle crossed herself. Cross my heart and hope the flies stick a cupcake in my eye. She said, fizzing the little ritual. So glanced at Danielle and Mike as he stared at her. What? Pick your pie tie to me. Megan laughed. <laughs> we better get going. She ran over to Mike and kissed him, then hugged Danielle and Michelle. You say safe, she said, before running back to the chariot and sitting down. The princess ponies all trotted over as Megan, Twilight, Molly, and Danny entered the chariot sitting down, or in Danny's case, letting his wheelchair be secured. Give our best to the princesses, Harkle said, waving a hoof. Twilight waved back as Cracker Roll hits himself to his harness. He looked back. Please, burn the headsets, he said mostly to the ones covering his ears. He stopped twice, and the Pegasite gouged forward, wings spread out. They quickly lifted off the ground, sailing into the sky, and angling to Canterlot. Mike glanced to his side of his stars. Alright, be back in a hour, alright? 
Daniel grabbed the bag and hefted it up, grunting and said, <laughs> We will, Dad. She kissed him on the cheek. We love you. Michelle hefted her own bag, cheeks slightly turning red. We'll be all right, she said, settling back before saying herself. Applejack walked over and looked up to Mike. Might as well head into town yourself, Mac. Might be a bit before your wife gets back. She leaned over and winked. Head over to the Yabba cart and tell my brother, Mike McIntyre, I sent you. I get half off price. Mike chuckled and hefted the bag. <laughs> Thanks, Applejack. Featherful walked along the halls of the Royal Palace. A cart and cleaning supplies were on behind her. She passed by an earth pony in the arm of a royal guard. <laughs> hey, Bullrock. Bullrock nodded to her. <laughs> Featherful. How's the princess doing? Featherful paused and looked around before leaning in close to her friend. <sighs> princess Celestia is expecting an old friend to show up. An old friend! She kept her back and shook her head. I have been racking my brain trying to figure out who it is! Bullock's brow furrowed, his helmet shifting. <laughs> an old friend? He tapped his hoof on the marble floor, sending out echoes along the corridor. Wait, Festival, you remember our high school classes in high school together? You remember the prophecies of the Moochick considering the Magne? Festival's eyes suddenly white and her heart moved. What? what? You don't mean that prophecy, do you? The air pony nodded, cleared his throat. <clears throat> the first shall become the last. And when the Magne returns, she shall lead old and new against the corruption. He paused as he expressed in Matt's featherfuls. This old friend. Did the princesses mention anything about her? Not much, Featherful responded, shaking her head. An old friend who taught her everything, pretty much. Bulwark breathed out. <sighs> then it is the Magne. He suddenly turned around as the sound of hooves echoed along the end of the corridor. Who goes there? Princess Blue Blood, Prince Blue Blood gobbled along the way for the car car corridor. The unicorn panted for exhaustion. And... <sighs> Impossible! He half shouted. The Magne! Buck! Megan let out a whoop as the chariot sailed through the air, a huge grin on her face. Yeehaw! I never saw her train a lot of Lisa Cunyon! She said, throwing her hands up into the air. She looked around as the canterlot in the mountainside was built into a expanded. She leaned over the railing and adjusted her headset, pressing a button on it. Charity, can you hear me? Cracker Roll's voice came over the headphones, laced her sack. Affirmative, over. Megan looked around, spied several cities off in the distance. Can you tell me the names of some of the cities we're passing by? Over. Affirmative, he responded. We have binoculars in the jury for long-range spotting. His head bobbed to the left. If you look over to your immediate left, you'll see Manhattan and New York City. Farther along is Pittsburgh and Stalingrad. He then turned his head to the right. To your immediate right is Poggery and Madrid. Over. <coughs> Megan, I like you, Sarah. She, <coughs> she looked around and quickly pulled the binoculars off a hook and along the air wall. So many bike cities. She leaned back, looking through them, frowning. Molly, you've been to New York. Tell me. When you flew over to JFK, did the skyline look anything like Manhattan? Molly stood up and leaned forward, while holding them to her eyes. Well, yeah, it's not exactly like it, but those are some pretty big buildings. Now that I think about it, Stallion Gray has, has a nice skyline, too. She sat back down, looking at Megan out of the corner of her eye. Megan, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Danny sat in his wheelchair. Turning around the waist. <clears throat> How many groups of ponies did we get together for the Equestrian Alliance before we left? He turned around as Canterlot Loon. And How big was Canterlot then? Just the fort, if my memory is right. Try to shift near back of her back. But Megan rose from her seat and walked over and knelt beside her. Don't worry, she said, patting the on the back. There's questions we have, but we won't ask you anything. Twilight nodded, smiling. Thanks, Megan. She sighed and looked to the floor. I wish... I wish I could tell you. I really do. She blinked away moisture from her eyes. How does Pinky keep stuff inside like she does? Megan barked at her laugh. <laughs> How else does she play in those parties of hers? She stood back up, walked back to her seat as the chariot flew up to Carola itself. A large tower with a series of red and green lights shining from it. 
Pegasi spread their wings out, angled to increase drag. They kicked into the air and flew down to the Terra proper, trying to a four hole of landing as an Earth pony wearing a bright orange vest and flashlights mounted to her hooves waved them to the side in a full stop. Cracker Roll and his team unhitched themselves from the chariot and walked over to the hats. Cracker Roll opened it and waited while Megan, Molly, Danny, and Twilight disembarked. <clears throat> we said I'd sort you to the princess's chambers, he said. Megan and Molly curtsied to him. Like ya, Megan said, as the Pegasi formed up around the quartet. They walked down the hangar, down the halls lined with ornate tapestries and windows looking out across the countryside. They passed by ponies, zebras, deer, and other species. Megan waved to them, but the ponies mostly sighed away from them. Megan shrugged. Hmm. I guess they'll take time. Danny rolled up to Cracker Roll as they walked. So, drive him? Cracker Roll shook his head. <clears throat> Princesses wish to meet you in an informal setting, free for the traffic's royalty. Dean Finsley stopped before a door marked private study. The Pegasi broke formation, and Cracker rolled most to the floor. Door. The Princesses are inside. And with that, he and the others left. Megan breathed in. She raised her hand to the door handle, but stopped. She clenched her hand to the fist and shuddered. Molly and Danny were there by her side in an instant. Molly placed a hand on Megan's shoulder and squeezed. You're not alone, she said. Danny patting Megan's forearm on the other side. Just like old times, sis. He suddenly glanced back at Twilight and waved her forward. Well, maybe not fully like old times, but we're all here for you. Twilight nodded. Right, Danny. She leaned forward to look at Megan. You'll be all right. They're your friends, right? Megan half smiled. You're right. She looked at the three. You're all right. Thank you. She reached up and grabbed the door handle, twisting and opening it up. She stepped inside. Celestia? Celestia? Celestia reclined on a sofa, eyes focused on the door. A teacup floated over, shaking slightly as she sipped on it. She concentrated on her breathing, slowing it down. Luna? Do you? She stopped as she looked over and saw the other empty soda, and Lufa, Luna was lying, hiding behind it. She slid off the couch and onto her hose, walked over, and lowering her head and nuzzling Luna. Luna, what is it? What's wrong? Luna looked up, tears streaming down her eyes. She threw her four legs up in the air. Oh, Celestia! They're go gonna hate me! She bawled out, shuddering. Donian! What happened? It's dead like that moon. She dropped to her head and sniffled. Don't hate me. I know it. Celestia sat down, wrapped a foreleg around Luna's neck, pulling in for a hug. No, they won't. It's Megan, Luna. They won't hate you. Neither will Danny. Luna looked up at her older sister and smiled. Thanks. But I still don't know. My stomach is full of butterflies and my head's spinning. She suddenly yawned. <sighs> And even with you taking over the moon for me tonight, I'm still tired. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for that. So let see it chuckled. <laughs> You're welcome. So he rose to walk behind, back to the sofa, sitting down. So he looked to the door, but gasped as he felt the inherent magic of Twilight Sparkle right behind it. They're here! She squeaked out. The door opened, and Megan was there, standing in the door jam. She wore a red ankle-length dress, contrasting with the rugged backpack and rifle slung over her shoulder. Why does that look awesome? I mean, do, that's the idea that she's wearing a red ankle dress, a red dress with a rifle and a backpack. That just screams to me, I'm going to be awesome and you ain't stopping me. Molly was at her left, wearing a pair of black dress and blouse. Danny at her right, wearing, wearing a dress shirt, pair of slacks and fingerless gloves. Twilight completed the party, and Celestia inwardly chuckled at the purple ribbon ta tied to her tail. Megan stepped inside. Celestia? She said, her eyes flying. Her hand flew to her mouth. Celestia? She stood there, gasping. Is it... Is it you? Celestia slid off the sofa, stumbling a bit as her fist blurred. Yes. Great stars, it's me. She went there, her eyes with four legs, but the tears still flowed freely. Is it... You? She stepped forward, leaned back. I just... I can't believe it's... Megan was suddenly there by her side, wrapping her arms around Celestia's neck and pulling her for a hug. I can't either! 
She said tears flowing from her own eyes. She held it for a full minute before letting go. Stepping back, she let Celestia over. Celestia, you're not a pony anymore! You're a horse! <laughs> she looked up at her free-flowing mane and held a hand out, reaching to it. I'm almost afraid to touch your mane or tail. Celestia bit her lip. Oh, don't worry. It's only bad if you walked over a carpet beforehand. She leaned over. Danny, Molly, you're both looking well. She said fresh tears rolled from her eyes. I'm so happy. Molly wiped her eyes and sniffed. So am I, Celestia. She hunched over. It's so great to see you again. Dang, Nolly took out a handkerchief, fluffing his eyes. It's great to see you. He looked around. Where's Luna? He wheeled himself around, finally spying the alcorn behind the sofa. Luna, what are you doing there? He asked, stopping short of her. Luna raised her head at him, blinking. Donnie, you're... Her eyes drifted to his wheelchair, and her gaze drifted off to the side. I'm sorry, she whispered. I'm so sorry. Thunder and lightning crashed all around Luna, but none of it mattered as she nuzzled Danny's bleeding check. Donnie, please! She cried out. She raced around and tugged at the tree branch, laying across his back. Danny! Danny's eyes flared open and groaned. Luna, you all right? Danny leaned forward as far as he could go, grabbing Luna's head and letting it support him as he slid forward, grabbing her neck in a hug. No, he said, tears swelling. No, Luna. It's good to see you again. He scooted up and back, leaving at Celestia. Now, come on! This is a party among old friends! Luna rose to her four hooves and followed him to the rest of the group. Sitting down to the sofa while three chairs slid over for Megan, Molly, and Twilight. They all sat down, Danny stopping next to them. Celestia sat back down on her own sofa and cleared her throat. A handkerchief floated over and wiped her cheeks and down to her eyes. She looked at the three and smiled. I... I don't know what to say, she confessed, chuckling. <laughs> I never thought I'd see you again, any of you. Megan nodded and wiped her face. But another handkerchief floated over to her and tapped it. Thank you. And I... I was you have a question. Her eyes lowered and her eyes grew shut. Celestia? Luna? She looked up and face scrunched. How long has it really been? How long for you, at least? Celestia froze to a sofa. Time crawled to a standstill for her. But she looked up and liked what size with Megan. How long have you known? She whispered. Megan cleared her throat and laced her fingers together. <clears throat> it was confirmed when we flew over Equestria. She explained. So many big cities there. But were there more clues about? I had a feeling how peaceful it was. She looked at Twilight. Twilight of Rainbow Dance didn't know what the smooth was. And there's the fact that the Dragon King is coming by for a party for some reason. She shrugged. The dragons were on friendly terms with the ponies when we left, but not that friendly. Luna spoke up. That night, when you came back, I examined the hull. It seemed to sync up your world and ours, keeping time and pace on both sides. But, when the Rainbow Bridge collapsed, time and pony land seemed to speed up. I don't know why, though. Danny's eyes narrowed. Wait. Did you cross the earth lane? I thought I saw something that night outside! He suddenly grinned and snapped his fingers. That was you, wasn't it? Luna nodded, buzzing slightly. It was, Donnie. I just... wanted to see you three. It's been so long. Megan breathed out through her nostrils. So, my friends? Wing Whistler? Firefly? Surprise? She shook her head. I never even expected to see them again. At least in my head. She placed her hand to her chest. But in my heart, I always wanted to say a proper goodbye to them. To say thank you to them for being my friends. She went to the ceiling. So, 
how long hiatus it been, Celestia? Celestia looked at Danny, then Molly, and then Twilight before looking to Megan. Are you ready? And her Nazi continue. It has been 1,500 years here since you have left, Megan. Megan's draft dropped open. Her hands dropped to her sides aghast. 1,500 years! She leaned forward, rubbing her pale cheeks. Silence permeated the room as the information sank into the tree. Danny caught to his fist. <coughs> 1,500 years, Lance! He trailed off and shook his head. Everything's changed. He finally said. He looked up to Celestia and Luna. I guess it explains how you not only got so large, but are also princesses. <laughs> he chuckled. I guess you've also gained full control of your parents, too? Luna nodded. Celestia raises the sun for the day, and I the moon for the night. She so looked to the side. No, for a while. Celestia slid off her sofa and placed a hoof on Megan's lap. Megan, are you all right? She leaned in and nuzzled Megan's cheek. Please, are you all right? Please? Megan rubbed the Celestia's muscle and half smiled. I'm all right. A plank. She looked over at Twilight, silent throughout the entire scenes. Thank you for not telling me, Twilight. I don't think I could have handled it as well. Celestia bowed her head. You're welcome, Megan. She looked down to Celestia. Princess, may I ask? Are you all right? Celestia smiled at Twilight. Yes, she said. And thank you, Twilight. She settled back on the sofa. Megan, what would you like to do now? Molly, Danny, you. She held it before like it swayed to side to side. We have all day, you know. Megan sat back up in her chair. Well, there's that party back of pony for you you stayed up. It'd be a shame for the guests of ours to not a tan. She rose her shaky feet. But first, if it's possible, could we have a tour of Cantalot, please? Celestia and Luna slid out their sofas. You shall have a tour of Fiddler Queen! She announced. Nothing but the best for you three. Make it clear to throw. Ahem. <coughs> well, Fiddler Princess is good enough. She paused to rub her chin. Wait. Why are you two princesses rather queens? Luna's eyes widened. But, Megan! You always taught us to be humbled and not to distance yourselves from other ponies. She placed a host on her chest. Aurora's greatest responsibility is to their subjects, you said. Celestia nodded. Yes. And queens can't have tea parties with their subjects either. A goofy smile across her face. And I still love their tea parties together. They were so much fun. Megan grinned. Well, perhaps after the party, we can come back for the tea party. Just the three of us. Celestia's eyes brightened. Yes, 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 yes. She cuts her host together so briefly. It'll be so much fun. She walked over to the door. Opening as he approached. Come, come! There is so much to show you! 